episode. It's been a quiet week, so we take your questions, have a chat about games, make some general small talk, and, uh, well, that's that's kind of it. But uh, other than that, uh, you know, the usual show. So, Zach, cue the music. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Nintendo Dads podcast, the podcast not just for dads, but also has Nintendo. Uh, if you like games, listen to us. We're working on the tagline. Joining us tonight, oh, by the way, my name is Zach Erickson. It's July 22nd, 2015. Joining me tonight is Justin Masson. What's going on, Justin? I totally lost my groove for that intro. <laughs> my, um, my beautiful wife walks downstairs and, uh, and kind of looked at me, and I typically don't lose my... Uh, kind of composure or cool but it was uh it was a bit of a slip so you know yeah just uh you know it's just keeping the keeping the the love alive uh speaking of a slip joining us as well is jesse waldack from vgtribune.com what's going on jesse what <laughs> um yeah hearing you stumble through that tagline reminds me of uh a running gag that they're doing on the the latest transformers cartoon have you ever seen this no, yeah, I think it, I, air, it airs like Cartoon Network Saturday morning at five thirty or four. The 40. most recent one I've seen is is Transformers Prime. Is that still a thing, or is this no? New this is a, this is something new. Uh, oh in, man! In this one, Bumblebee is the team lead. Does he does he talk, or is it like he, he talks? He got okay. He he got his voice back near the at the end of Prime. And oh, so this is a okay. This is a, so this is a sequel to that. You know, voiced by Will Friedel, which is one of my favorite voice actors. He did uh, Terry McGinnis, uh, Batman Beyond, and uh, Ron Stoppable in Kim Possible. Anyway, um, he was trying to be the leader that, that Optimus was. He's learning. Right. He's not. He's learning. He's stumbling through it. He's trying to come up with a rally cry. And he tries something new every week. And every week, the rest of his team is like, really? That's what we got? <laughs> nice. <laughs> Well, I think so, that's... so. In this analogy, am I the bumblebee of of someone else's Optimus Prime? No, Zach was the bumblebee trying to. Oh, trying to the with the uh, with the tagline. Yes, yes, uh, I agree. I, I think it's going to be a thing. We're going to keep trying them on, just different ones. If you if you have taglines to be tried on, uh, at Zach Erickson Z A C E R I C K S O N on Twitter, and like we will have them. We're we're trying them on like a good pair of underoos. We're trying to figure out what fits properly. <laughs> oh no! We went yes, down. we are. Yes, we are <laughs> trying them on. Uh, so oh, we will. I forgot all about that. Yeah, we're yeah. I don't even think the people at home know what that is. We're gonna leave that no as a idea. mystery, folks. We're gonna we're gonna leave that as a mystery. And you know what? <laughs> Speaking of mysteries, I think we need to head straight into the news. <clears throat> Do it. Oh. I was a little bit quiet at the beginning there. Uh, so news this week again. It's been a slow week, right? It's been uh... and, and I and I think probably rightfully it's been a slow week, right? Mm-hmm. With the uh, with the passing of a Watt, you know, Watt Watt has passed away now for uh, almost two weeks. Um, however, I still think we were talking about it in the pre-show, the Periscope pre-show. Um, I think Nintendo is still finding trying to find a bit of its a foot. Or I think the air is taken out of it for a little bit, and they're just trying to find their way. So I, I, I do suspect it may be a quiet news week even next week, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. Um, and, you know, I mean, there's, again, there was a, Iwata's funeral was on Friday, right? Mm-hmm. And um, I, I wanted to pull this up, and I, I just kind of, I really liked reading through, um, sit, or who was it here? Uh Genyo Takeda. I don't know if it's Genyo or Genyo. I, Genyo, right, in Japanese? Um, I think that's how you pronounce that. Uh, the Again, he's one of the two operating... What's what's the official title here? Uh, his He's the... Anyway. Uh, he's one of the two acting presidents of Nintendo, right? Him, uh, Takeda and Miyamoto are the two acting presidents. Um, and he had this great eulogy at the funeral, and um, I... I I thought it would be kind of cool to just kind of read through some of it because it was really, uh, really touching, actually. Uh, because, you know, as far as, as far as like who Iwata was, you know, we keep getting these stories. And um, again, we're, uh, you know, we had that great, uh, you know, I really enjoyed going through a lot of this stuff last week. But um, 
I, I did want to go through this eulogy just at least for a little, uh, just for a little bit, just because it was so so cool, um, and also because, by the way, I we kind of said in the pre-show, I really think it's telling that um, that Takeda-san was the one who gave the the eulogy right at the funeral on behalf of Nintendo. Um, it it wasn't you know it wasn't Miyamoto. It was it was Takeda. So I I feel like. You know, very quickly, do you, I feel like there's been a lot of talk about who's going to be the successor and whatever. Um, I feel like it's going to be him. Uh, what do you guys think? You know, and there's there's been more talk that it's not going to be Miyamoto. Um, you know, we talked about that last week. What do you guys think? Uh, yeah, I don't think it's going to be Miyamoto um, for sure. Um, I I I don't know, <laughs> but I definitely don't think it's Miyamoto. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, uh, I know he's uh, he's he's not as a, as good of a public speaker as Iwata was, and I don't know Takeda, Takeda is at all about how well of a speaker he, he is. How about how you know how apparently better than me because I can't talk right now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, all right, so but, uh, I just yeah, wanna... you you know what I'm trying to say. Absolutely. So I'm just going to read some of this, if that's okay with you guys. Um, it says, as we gather here today for a joint funeral with Nintendo Company Limited and Mr. Iwata's family, I would like to share my heartfelt condolences. President Iwata, allow me to call you Iwata-san, just as I used, as I always used to. Iwata-san, you left us far too soon, having just chaired our shareholders meeting the other day on June 26th. The news of your sudden death has left us has left all the employees overcome with deep sorrow. The late Yamauchi-san passed the baton to you in naming the, you the president of Nintendo in 2002, and the two senior managing directors of the company, Shigeru Miyamoto and I, have been assisting and working alongside you. Being rather short-tempered myself, I kind of like that little thing, by the way, being rather short-tempered myself, the thing that I'm always deeply struck by by is that you were a true leader in every sense of the word, overflowing with compassion for people. You always maintained a two-way dialogue, even with the next generation of employees or with much younger members of the development and marketing teams, or with employees outside of Japan whose different customs and cultures can make communication challenging, sometimes even admitting your mistakes to them. You demonstrated this through your belief that people could eventually come to understand one another and your strong conviction that the best way for us to grow is through patient communication even if it took so several times, a, a dozen times, or s even seemingly endless discussion. Which, uh, I just want to stop for a second, by, by the way. Um, that is really an interesting little piece of discussion there for a minute. For him to really drive home, and you know, kind of almost like a peek behind the curtain, that, uh, especially for a lot of these Japanese executives, uh, and, and especially from, from Takeda-san's perspective, it was all it's always been this real challenge to you know that that sort of discussion between NOA and NCL on you know on the communication there and i think maybe that's part of the reason why he insisted on being the ceo of nintendo of america because communication is already so difficult and so japan's got their stamp on on what's got to happen right um, I don't know. What do you guys think about that? About that sort of discussion that he has there? Kind of sounds like a little dig on Yamamoyuchi, uh, because you know apparently he either he didn't, he couldn't, or didn't want to speak English, or he never attempted to. And I was, I, I'm to told he's never even set foot on Amer in America, mm -hmm. so he's never seen the the the, rep, the the Washington headquarters of any way. So he's done everything by remote you know through mm -hmm. whoever he put in charge here and it seems like it seems like that would have that could have potentially really created this sort of culture in especially in ncl um in the higher ups of like oh my gosh i just hate it i just hate talking to the to the the, the foreign people because i can never understand what they're saying and it's frustrating to have to talk through a translator and w i hate it so we're just not going to do it and so iwata was actually like no let's make this work let's figure it out you know even he he's saying like um your strong conviction that the best way for us to grow is through patient communication even if it took several times a dozen times or even endless seemingly endless discussion yeah. what, like what i don't know is did he know english as well as he did before he joined his. He put it was put in his role in two thousand two, or if that is that something he ended up learning along the way. I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't that think would be anyone knows. To know. 
because no one's ever talked about that. Mm-hmm. That would be really interesting to know for sure, though. Um, yeah. Anyway, I thought that was cool. So, any, Justin, you, any thoughts before I keep going here? Just because no, there's some keep, another few great. cool things. He said you succeeded in planting the seed in employees' hearts that, in order to solve an issue, there is a fundamental cycle whereby you make a hypothesis, execute the plan, see the result, and then make adjustments, and by which you have caringly nurtured these seeds to sprout and mature into plants. Until now, our successors and the younger generation would take a few, would take a few first steps and then look back to you for guidance because they could not tell if they had chosen the right path. Today, they cannot ask for your guidance anymore. However, I am sure that they have already made the firm determination that they will continue on their own, making the hypothesis, executing the plan, seeing the results, and reflecting on the results to improve and adjust by themselves. I love this whole th- As a scientist, as somebody who's done a master's in neuroscience and done a lot of research, this is like the scientific method, by the way, um, if, if people weren't aware of that. But I, I just love this whole this whole thing of, you know, like how he has really uh, developed this sort of, you know, sort of attitude and culture of experimentation at Nintendo, right? This is what has driven them to be, uh, you know, as innovative as they are, is just like, I don't know, let's try it. And so they'll, they'll try something and they'll plan it out. You know, they'll have an idea, they'll plan it out, uh, and then they'll just see what happens and they'll make adjustments. That's what, that's what science, the scientific method is. Um, and to see, you know, see this applied so, so well as a cultural sort of aspect of Nintendo, I think is, is actually really cool. And I, I had never really thought about it that way before, but maybe that's just because I'm not that familiar with R and D in general. I don't know. I had never considered applying it to, to this sort of thing, but I really, really liked that whole, that whole bit there. So I've never really thought about it, but I've done similar things just with my computer programming at work. You know, there's a problem, but I don't know what's causing it. I have a guess, and the only w- I have no way to prove it. The only thing I can do is think I'm right, code a fix, presu- presuming I'm right, and see what happens. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and the fact, and the fact that he's, you know, it's just like the 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 newer, you know, the sort of newer generation would would try something and then would take the results to Iwata and be like, okay, what did, how did we do, right? And now they're not, he's not there anymore, but they're still going to be able to go through that. He, they've been taught that exact same process. Um, in the face of your unbelievable passing, it will surely take some time before we can emerge from this deep sorrow. Please know, however, that the seeds you have planted and the plants that have sprouted will put forth small flowers as they bring smiles to the faces of people around the world blossom into a grand flower bigger than even you, our leader, Iwata-san. Together with Miyamoto and others of our generation, we swear in our hearts that we will continue our efforts so that someday we can report and present to you the blossoming of these flowers. May you continuously watch over and guide us managers, our employees, and your family. On behalf of us all, I would like to offer my heartfelt condolences and sincerest prayer. May you rest in peace, Iwata-san. Uh, yeah, I I love that. I thought it was just like a, a beautiful eulogy. Um, and uh, yeah, any other thoughts, guys? Anything else that kind of like stuck out to you, or or any just like overall thoughts? No, I mean I think I think that they did a great job um, of highlighting kind of Nintendo's approach to to your statement and that and Jesse, same thing that you said a couple moments ago. This experimentation. Right uh, of what Nintendo does, this this idea of you know kind of wild and big dreams and to try and resolve, um, and I think and to push the boundaries. You know, I was watching um, really great video on Game Theorist recently, and, and he talked about you know what's killing the video game industry is is really gamers and gamers <laughs> who. Um, who say they want innovation but don't actually put their you know, wallet behind it, mm-hmm. but rather purchase annualized games of like Call of Duty and Assassin's Creed? But Nintendo has always been um, a company that you know, you know, for the flop that is the that is um, the Virtual Boy, um, and, and arguably perhaps the flop that is is the Wii U. They are a company that 
pushes and challenges the industry to innovate and try something different. Um, and I think Awada was critical in all of that, um, especially when he came in generally, you know, when he came in um, in 2002 and took over. And earlier um, this week was the 20th anniversary of Virtual Boy. Yeah. And so now, mm-hmm. now that we have Oculus Rift and the other cl- similar products on the way next year, Nintendo was just ahead of themselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Absolutely. It's yeah, for much, sure. Much so like what Neo not, not Neo was it Neo Geo or what was one of those game systems in the early 90s with a cost $600 what was ahead of his time. Yeah. I forget which one that was. Something like that. I'm not sure. Um so yeah, anyway, I thought that was I thought that was a, a really and you know, there were thousands of people who were at the at the funeral and you know, I really just think it's been uh basically this week it, it has been a slow news week but we kind of to be fair a um nintendo was kind of a slow like uh, this summer in general is really slow and so we kind of you know that was also but also of course we we knew that um that, that they're still kind of picking up the pieces so to speak you know what i mean uh and and they're just being quiet on purpose i think for a little while um so yeah i think that's pretty cool there there have been again those articles this week kind of speculating where uh where the company's gonna go i don't think we really need to talk too much about that we talked about it a little bit last week so if you want some more discussion on that go and listen to our podcast last week if we if you want more chat about that so um next any other thoughts before we move on guys no, I think you're all right. Okay, cool. So next up, we have Splatfest and some Splatoon stuff that came out this week. I want to play on. Inst- I'm going to play this video if that's okay. Um, you can't hear. You can see it. You can hear it though. This is a video of me finding out who won Splatfest. Oh! <laughs> I don't know. If people follow me. Nice. Um, that was it. So. That was it. Was actually a lot quieter than I expected. <laughs> but uh, so basically, Team Roller Coasters yes. won. I actually got to play Splatfest this time, um, and maybe we'll talk about it a little bit more later. But um, Team Roller Coasters won, and I think it's a little bit weird. It was 152 to 148 was the score, um, and it was all based on popularity. Or it's so again for those of you who actually did Splatfest last time. You already know this, but the score is calculated by um, there is it's out of percentages. So the percentage of popularity this time it was a little bit more. uh, Team Water Slides was more popular, but Team Roller Coasters won more games, and so and the the wins popular or the wins percentage is doubled, and so then you basically have uh, that's how you get the the final score. So it was 152 to 148, uh, which is very close. Uh, condolences to Justin. I know you were Team Water Slides. I was. Did, how much did you get to play this time? None. I was uh, at a wedding in Calgary. Like, oh, that's I right. have not had a chance to play any of this stuff. Okay, so, so you so could have, have turned you, the tide. You could have <laughs> if you would have just had your priorities straight, man. Uh, so basically, uh, just some like impressions. I, I I figured we might as well just talk about it now instead of later, but. Um, I love the fact that like this game is totally different, uh, especially like the main, the main, what is it, the main lobby or whatever t- city the city is. I don't know, um, but like it's like the cool nighttime. Inkopolis. Yeah, Inkopolis. There you go. Wow. Um, you know, it's nighttime, and so it's very, uh, you know, like neon lights everywhere. It's super colorful. They they've got the big trucks. Um, they put the the uh, Miiverse graffiti all over the place. Like, you can actually kind of watch it if your internet's a little bit slower um, when when Inkopolis first kind of launches up. Um, if you get in there fast enough, way up high in the distance, you can see all of the neon sort of uh, billboards, and they, like, slowly filled in with all of the, the Miiverse art. But it was really cool. I really liked the visual of it, and it kind of makes me... I wonder what you guys think. Like, what is their long-term strategy with Splatfest? Is it like, is it going to be a one, like a once-a-month thing? Did we talk about this last week? I don't know if we did or not. I don't think we did. No, we didn't. Uh, like, what is their long-term strategy for Splatfest? Is it going to be once a month? Is it going to be like consistent? Like, like five years from now, when I plug, when I when I launch 
uh, Splatoon. Am I going to have a Splatfest? Am I going to be able to play that? Or is that something that's going to be lost forever? I don't know. What do you guys think? Uh, say that again? So, like, is Splatfest something that we're going to be seeing for a long time to come? Like, year? I'm not just thinking six months or a year from now. I'm thinking, like, after the Annex has launched. No, I, I don't be, think so. You don't think we're going to see any more Splatfests? I think they or, probably no. have maybe a year's worth you know, by month yep. planned, and after that, it might oh, see, that's such a to quarters, and if it doesn't, if they even keep it up at that point. That's super sad to me, because it actually, I preferred Splatfest, like some of the visuals and like some of the music that they use is all totally unique to Splatfest, and uh, it's sad to me that we'll, we won't have those forever you know that we wouldn't be able to just launch it in splatfest mode because really it's just a skin and there's no reason that you couldn't do splatfest uh you know just kind of flip a switch and say okay it's splatfest now uh you know i don't know that's weird but it'll be interesting to see also um in the uk or in europe the the competition was eating versus sleeping and eating one just which like the weirdest competition ever like of all the base you know of all the things like yeah eating and sleeping doesn't get it get any simpler than that so um anyway i really liked it also some new weapons and it, there wasn't a new map was there um no, no and this was kind of the point i was going to make because i mean i think that you know in the last week we've received four new weapons which are great i love the weapons they're cool but um i need to start seeing some more maps <laughs> yeah. Um because I feel like we're getting a little bit thin have on you that. Played on, and, have you played on the Moray Towers yet? Yeah. The one that's really vertical? No. It's it's like uh it's basically there's two there are two towers and it's w the starting position is way up high and it's just this sort of back and forth zigzag ramp all the oh, way no. down to the middle I and have, then all the way back up to the top. Not yet. Dude, that level's awesome. Okay. I I'll love that, that level. But yeah, I was really thinking good. I was thinking about this as we were prepping for the show that we have got to be getting a Nintendo Direct soon. And the reason I say that is we know that Splatoon is supposed to have a big update in August, right? Where we're able to yep. actually create our own matches, as is Smash Brothers. Yes. And we haven't heard from either of those yet. No. Yeah, and it's almost the end of the month, and so August is coming. Um, yeah, I feel like I feel like they need to give it another... Uh, they give it another week... And then they come back. Uh, you know, their social media kicks back into gear and they start uh, building the hype train. Because uh, the, you got to think, too, the month after that, Mario Maker's coming up. Mario Maker's mm -hmm. coming out in like a month and a half, which is mm -hmm. nuts. And they haven't said anything since E3. When is the, what is, see, I wonder, sometimes I like to just go and look at when all the Nintendo Directs have been out. Like, when when have they been launched since? And I wonder if... Ah, uh, let's see here. Micro Direct, yada, yada yada. This is sorry. This is probably not very good podcast fodder. But um, <laughs> I'm just curious. I'm curious when they, when how long of a wait it was last year. So, yeah, so, uh, actually they didn't have another one until September 4th last year, um, and that was for Hyrule Warriors. But Hyrule Warriors was in October, right? And so for them mm. to, for them to have it. I guess the no, it's eighth. So that would have been August. So yeah, no, we're due, dude. Um, for it to come out August fourth, two thousand fourteen, was the Hyrule Warriors Direct. Um, yeah, so they, yeah, we're due. And then they pretty much had one one a month through. Yeah, November. then Bayonetta, Bayonetta, Smash Bros, and then a Nintendo Direct for the the coming year. Yeah, no, we're we're due. Uh, I'm gonna say. I don't know. First week of August again is when we'll see one. That's a, a few weeks away, but. A couple weeks. I think that feels long enough from Iwata's death. But also, they've also been saying that they've got Miiverse stuff coming out, right? They've got the Miiverse yeah. refresh that they're gonna have to, they're gonna have to tell us about um, their Club Nintendo replacement. Uh, a lot coming up pretty quick here. So I I agree. Nintendo Direct. What do you guys think as far as as far as uh, timing? I think I think probably the middle of August. Middle of August. That sounds about right. Yeah, I'm going to say first week of August, first full week of August, um, which actually doesn't make sense because the first full week starts on like the Sunday or the Monday or something. But and again, we know they've been given they they in the past provide like you know an hour's notice. Oh yeah, yeah. So <laughs> yeah. I, I I suspect nothing less. 
Yeah, uh, it, used right to be, it used to be about 24 hours notice. Then we get maybe 12, and the late, then sometimes two if we're lucky. And the mm-hmm. last last few, they just dump, they just drop them on us without any warning at all. Mm-hmm. Right on. Uh, so yeah, that's that's pretty much all I have for that. Finally, um, we have the. I, I just wanted to briefly mention this, and we'll have a link in our in our show notes. But there was this awesome video on Reddit. Uh, and it was later posted on different things, but uh, this uh, Mario Nursery, uh, some you know specifically for us Nintendo dads, uh, Mario Nursery. It was uh, somebody who had built this incredible um, you know nursery or like a kid's um, like a baby's room um, for for their kid, and it was just this elaborate mural on all of the walls, and he had built this Mario sculpture on a cart. Uh, sculpted the whole thing like the video showed him sculpting the whole thing um and had basically stuck it to the roof you know the sort of like mario kart 8 anti-gravity bit that uh is going on there and it man it was so cool so go and check it out um again we'll have a link in, in the show notes but super super cool um nursery and uh, I, I don't think my wife would ever let me do this, but it would be super cool if we ever have kids again, <laughs> or if we have any more kids. That would be awesome. Although I don't think I'm as talented as this guy. Um, that's pretty amazing. So, uh, any anything else you guys want to bring up last minute before we head into what we've been playing? No, do it. All right. <laughs> All right, so uh, Justin, why don't you start off? What have you been playing this week? Sure. So I have been playing Roving Rogue, uh, which I had talked about a couple weeks ago. We had received a review copy uh, code of the game, and uh, in those early July, and I uh, I've played it and put a review uh, review actually just just um, um, just up on the website actually today uh, about it. And uh, you can find the eShop for seven ninety nine US. Uh, other well, it's it's not bad. Um, there's some challenges I have with it. Um, the 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 concept they've taken is that you play from the from the end. So you've killed the end boss. The credits are rolling, and then you have to kind of get your way out of this castle. And the castle begins to kind of fall apart behind you. The lava is rising. Uh, and in each of these levels that you're trying to complete, there are three of these idols that you try and basically capture. There's a couple issues I have with it. Um, the only kind of ability that you have is this teleporting function to jump through walls to avoid enemies and to beat the lava and to get to the door, which is the end of the level. Um, the challenge I have with it is that the actual control functionality to actually do this teleporting doesn't work that well. It sticks sometimes. I find the controls very clunky. Um, the other challenge I have is that the camera is pulled back too far. So visually, it's actually very hard to see. Um, and it's challenging. And it shows the entire level, actually, as you're almost pretty much a lot of the level as you're trying to get through, the le- through it, which kind of takes away some of those parts of uh, suspense and surprise. So um, there's some good function. There's some good pieces of it. They have a four-player online, which is which is very or four-player multiplayer function, which is kind of fun. You're competing against each other, and you're kind of you know also pushing each other, getting each other's way, and kill, pushing kill, uh, killing the other person, which is kind of fun. Um, it, it it feels like a, a game that, and I, and I mentioned the review, has a lot of nostalgia for eight-bit games. And it feels like it borrows a lot from Mario. Um, and what I mean by that is that the level, um, in the level, there's, you know, halfway through the level, there's a flag, which is a checkpoint. Um, there are ghosts, that are kind of like boos, that actually float around the levels. Um, there are spotlights, kind of where you can only see a certain amount of um, stuff around you. And it very much has a reminiscent feel of, like, being in Bowser's Castle. So you can definitely tell there were some, some liberties taken. Um taken with it um but there are some challenges with it as well so that's that's roving rogue um check out my full review on the site for vgtribune.com uh and the other game that i'm playing that we got a review code for that i'll uh provide more detail is tiny galaxy uh and my early hands-on impression of it is i really like tiny galaxy however the actual like i don't know what you would call it but it makes me nauseous to look at it sometimes 
Um, I thought the same when I saw an early YouTube video. What yeah, is- it, 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 just the way the camera whips around. Yeah. Um, I need yeah. to look up videos of this because I'm I, – I, Remember you saying that Jesse on our on our text, and I just haven't seen it. So it's Tiny Galaxy. Okay, take it Ramamine first. <laughs> okay, uh, it's a lot of fun though, and it makes me want to keep coming back to playing and challenging. I like it, um, but uh, that's the only thing I have about right now. Kind of like what I remember is think like Mario Galaxy in a two D plane, but as you're running around the planet. You don't move. You stay right oh, in the gosh. middle, and everything else spins around you. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <Warned Cool>. you. <laughs> okay. No. Yeah. That that that'll give you a vertigo in a hurry. Holy cow. <laughs> so is it just like playable on the gamepad? Oh, there's a portal. Yeah. Both did, did, both did, these games are playable on the gamepad, and and that the on-screen functionality is just a repeating of what's on the gamepad. I do mm-hmm. remember um, so seeing does, so, comments. So neither of them really use it well. I do remember seeing comments on that video. It was an really early video I posted back in January, and he said that he was going to change like the spin rates so it wouldn't feel so bad. The, 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 does it look like they cleaned up some of that stuff, or that is, is it still look as rough as that YouTube video? Uh, I haven't watched the re- the YouTube video, um, but okay. it, it's not horrible. Okay, so when you here's a question that I have just looking at this video footage. Um, if you jump, do you automatically get pulled to it, or do you have to like double jump in order to do? Uh, it's a single. You get pulled to it. You do. Okay. Yeah. yeah no, I, um, I, I. Very few things actually give me vertigo and like make me dizzy, but that that's really kind of fast. <laughs> it's like a fast. It's like a, it's a really fun game, though. It looks pretty fun. Yeah. Uh, cool. I'm looking forward to hearing more about that for sure. I kind of, I don't know. I, you know, when you had emailed us too, I, you were like, Hey, anybody have time to review this? I was like, oh, I wish I have no, I, I don't even have time to play video games myself right now. Hardly. So, um, anyways, I'm going to turn this off. There we go. Cool. No, that's awesome. Uh, so I'm looking forward to hear from that. Uh, anything else? Sorry. Uh, what else have been playing? I'm <laughs> on my 3ds. I've been playing angler fishing. On your 3DS? So, yeah, on my 3DS, that uh, the me game. Uh, what oh, is it? oh, the what is that? The angler something? Yeah, no, yeah. One, the street pass fishing game. Yeah. Very cool. I finally passed the first island in that game. It took me forever. I don't know why. Yeah, I did last night actually. Yeah. Uh, that game's fun. Cool. Uh, Jesse, what have you been playing this week? I. Uh... Mostly finished up. I finished. I probably finished up as much as I ever will. The the Batman Arkham Knight. Uh, the, the the I won't reveal it here. But the person who end up who was the Arkham Knight was uh, kind of obvious. Was he got about half, halfway through the game? If you know Batman lore, and mm-hmm. so I wasn't surprised at all. Um, but. The, uh, I enjoyed the I enjoyed the game. I I finished every sub sub uh, sub arc except for the Riddler, which requires me to collect all 243 uh, trophies, uh, riddle solving, uh, break certain certain number of windows or items in, in each each area, and it's just a big time sink pain in the butt. Uh, the, and the other one was to capture Firefly, and I haven't figured out how to stop him. So that one's that one's still sitting at zero percent. But other than that, I completely finished the game. Very cool. So I'll probably still go back to it as they release new DLC. You know, I played through the the Harley DLC that, that I got for pre-order. That was like a half hour, and then I played the Batgirl DLC that hit last week, where. Uh, kind of a tag team between Batgirl and uh, the Tim Drake Robin, the uh, Red Robin. Mm-hmm. Uh, though the story focuses around Barbara. And cool. So that that was actually a a longer adventure. You know, that took like two hours to play through, more or less. So I'm, I'm glad that some not all of the DLCs are these quick little half hours and it's over. You know, mm-hmm. Some of them are going to have some some meat to them. Cool. Then, right on, man. Then the other thing, I haven't really gotten too deep in it yet, but uh, I did download and go through the tutorial of Heroes of the Storm. Oh, yes. 
Okay, I want to hear. Like, I know this is not a Nintendo, or this isn't a Nintendo game, but I want to hear you what you've been, what you think about it. Because anybody who has a computer can play this game. It's actually got pretty. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. So, go ahead. Um, it for anyone who doesn't know what this is, it's a, a MOBA along the lines of like League of Legends and uh, Dota Two, but uh, the characters in it are characters from various. You know, Blizzard games. Uh, Speci- among- yeah, specifically Warcraft, Starcraft, and Diablo. And there are and lost um, and lost Vikings. Well, I, I was I was gonna say <laughs> I saw the lost Vikings in there. I'm like, that would be weird. How about how that they play? Because apparently you're able to split up the three. Yeah, it's basically like you control all three characters. It's like controlling three characters at once. That would give me a headache. But anyway, yeah, um, it's labeled like they they labeled the difficulty in that one is very hard. So oh, I imagine. Anyway, so um, I've never played a mobile before. Uh, I was given a beta code to Dota 2 before it, it went live. I installed it, launched it, and thought, I have, I don't even know what to do. You know, I don't even, there isn't a tutorial. There isn't a single player AI campaign. It's pretty much, you know, I, I could watch other people play or try to play. And I'm like, I, I quit. I don't know. No, do. thank you. Yeah. So this has. I, I had a very similar experience getting into Dota. So this too. at least gives you a tutorial that kind of walks you through in baby steps. You know, starting with like a half a lane to teach you how to do certain things, and it teach, shows you uh, one lane with a mini battle against another character. Now I was uh, Rainer from StarCraft against Diablo. Uh, probably different week to week. I don't know if it is or not, depending on. No, I think this. I think the uh, the intro. I think is the same every time. Okay, because both of these characters happen to have been the free characters for that week anyway. Oh, okay. So, uh, so <laughs> cool. So uh, ultimately, until it gives you the the full three lane, uh, five five on five mm-hmm. play that's normal. And the, so far, I guess the AI it seemed pretty cakewalk you know mm-hmm. I'm, I'm level 20 they're level 15 at the end of the game so yeah i just stomped them so i imagine when i start if i win and if i ever start playing against humans that uh is not going to be the same <laughs> yeah they they have a lot of back end um back end matchmaking stuff going on and so hopefully you're winning about half your games after you've played for a while but um I honestly, sometimes when I want to play it, sometimes I'll still just get online and play some uh, AI games just because it's fun, you know. Um, it's it's really enjoyable. And so, so and just the, the thing with that, too, is like just just get in there and just at least do the daily quest uh, to get the gold for it. And then you can over time just buy more heroes and level up and that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, I really, I've, I've been playing it for quite a bit, too, actually. And so, I've, I've really enjoyed it. So one, so. Thing, I, one thing I did notice... Um, if I wanted to buy the characters that were available for free, they were like they were cheaper, like three, four, three or four bucks. But if I wanted to buy a character that wasn't the free character for the week, it was like ten. Is that kind of how it? Well, there's goes? different tiers. There's different tiers. So there's um, like if in the shop, if you sort it by like ascending price, um, there's there are two two heroes per class, and there's like four four classes. So there's like the tank the damage dealer the support which is like healing and or buffs or whatever and specialists so for specialists are kind of a little bit harder so there's no 2000 gold one but basically there's different pricing tiers um and those ones are are generally cheaper so there's like 2000 gold which will probably go for a few bucks uh 4000 7000 and 10000 and on for the first couple of weeks that a brand new character is out it'll be at 15000 and so the pricing will then kind of go up from there as well. Um, so so yeah, it's actually it's actually a little bit. I, th- I think I saw that technically it's the best use of your, best use of your money to save up and buy the more expensive ones, but you won't get them as you won't get as many characters as fast. Um, I think I have like eight characters now, but um, yeah, I don't know. It's and the thing is, is that they have so many free characters as well that it's just kind of like oh okay, well whatever. Um, it's a good way to to make to force you to learn learn new characters if you don't want to th- throw money at it right away. Mm-hmm. And the, uh, again, if if you're trying to make gold in order to buy characters, um, 
uh, I think you should get at least, I think I saw online, like, at least to level 5, because every time you level up a character, you get some sort of reward, and you get a pretty substantial gold reward when you get a character to level 5. So, you know, just, like, at least thinking, oh, well, at least I'll get this character to level 5, and then I'll get some gold out of it, and whatever, right? So... Um, I, I don't know. I've, I've been playing it a lot too. I, I like it. It's, um, it's actually been kind of nice because I haven't had a lot of, uh, like I brought my laptop, um, this week I've been, you know, my wife's, um, grandma passed away. And so we spent a, a few days out at, um, with family and stuff like that. And I didn't have, like I brought my 3DS, but I, I, you know, and I'll get to a little bit to the one game I did get to play on the 3DS. But, um, other than that, it was like Heroes of the Storm for me as well. So. Um, yeah, anyway, so did you like it? Like, what, what overall, what are your thoughts? Uh, are you so going to keep at it? I'm, I'm going to try it again. I'll probably have a, a, an opinion change once I try to play against humans. <laughs> mm-hmm. I've never it definitely, really it, liked multiplayer games. I've never been good at them. And there's, no, I mean, the thing is, is that there's nothing wrong if you really enjoy, if you find you really enjoy the AI matches... I find that I actually am way more comfortable just getting into AI matches and playing and just spending some time and it's fun just doing that. So, uh, so yeah, maybe we should uh, we should find a time that we we can play some games for sure. I don't know what once my moving situation is all settled. So and it has made me want to try to replay through Diablo three again. I never got far. Yeah, anymore. the cool Diablo stuff that's going on right now is pretty amazing. Cool. Uh, yeah. Any. Uh, so yeah, I'm quickly again i've been playing a little bit of heroes of the storm and i also after last week i went and played balloon fight because you know we had been talking about and and uh i i played some balloon fight and it was actually i i played some of the the sort of like level by level stuff and i was um and, and i was like man i'm not actually very good at this game and then i played balloon trip which is the mode that they played in the nintendo world championships and suddenly had mad respect for the people who were rocking it at that game because <laughs> holy cow i probably didn't get a minute in like on my best run i got like maybe a minute into that into the levels um and holy cow like uh that game is really fun but also really really challenging uh so um yeah i don't really have much more to say to th- about that other than the fact that i did actually go and play balloon fight after last week and it's it's really fun and really challenging and i kind of i kind of wish that they would i don't see it's hard to say that i wish that they would just remake this game because it's not i don't think it's necessarily something worth just entirely remaking well they kind of already but, did with the uh, nintendo land right well i guess that's true isn't it at yeah least, they did do least, the at least the balloon trip mode yeah, that's right. I forgot about that with the stylus controls, um, which was actually pretty interesting too. Uh, that that mode was really fun in in Nintendo Land too. So, uh, so yeah, that's basically all I've been able to play. I'm in the middle of moving, and uh, just between that and the funeral and everything else, it's just I haven't had a whole lot of time to play games. So yeah, a lot of people to forget that that's how a lot of the early NES games were. You know, because back then game developers who are used to writing arcade games. Yeah, and you want it to be challenging so, like that, right? Yeah, they want it to be challenging. They want it to be short. They don't want the games to go more than a minute or two. So, because it'll, then you know, people will drop more quarters. Mm-hmm. Yeah, totally. Right on. Uh, cool. So, next up, we have, now last week we had a suggestion to the show that we at, start adding weird segments and stuff like that. So this week, Justin has brought us some sort of surprise thing here. And uh, why don't you bring this? You know, and he why really you... gave us warning of what it is, and I still don't know how to answer the question. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, go ahead, Justin. What do, what do you got for us? All right. So so I think as, as Nintendo fans, um, we've probably played video games for a lot of our life. Do we have any music or bumper music? Oh, for yeah, this? here, I do. I actually Some presented... Kind of game, pr- game show hosting. How's that? Nice. A little, a little uh, Price is Right for you. Yeah. So as Nintendo fans uh, that we claim to be, is there any kind of... Is there any Nintendo game that you have never played, but you know from a... Nintendo fan geek gear geek cred perspective that you probably should have played but you haven't yet. Uh, I'm gonna let you go first, Jesse. 
<laughs> I need. Yeah, I've. I know what mine is. If you want me to go first, if you need a minute, I, I need to think. Yeah. Okay. Um, I I actually have said this on the show before, but mine is a link to the past. Mm. I have never played that, and I feel I actually feel like having played a link between worlds all the way through. I feel like I'm probably okay not going back to play it now, um, but I'm not sure about that. So that's mine, though. Um, yeah. I don't know, because because it's, from my understanding, oh, our music is over, okay, uh, this is apparently shorter than I thought, uh, um, <laughs> that's awkward, uh, so yeah, anyways, that that's mine, I, and again, it, I, I, part of part of the reason I never played it is because until the Nintendo 64, um, my house, I was a Sega kid, right, like, we got a Genesis, I was playing Sonic the Hedgehog 2, I was playing Fantasy Star 2, uh, stuff like that, and so I was never... Uh, until we got a Nintendo 64, I was a uh, I was a Sega kid, so um, so that's why I never played it back in the day. And then again, now I feel like I don't know. Do you feel like that's something? What do you, Justin? You are like such a such. A, it's one of your favorite games. It, you know, you you've said before that you really enjoyed it. So like, do you do you think that that's something? Having played A Link Between Worlds, I'm okay not playing it or what? Uh, no, you need to play it. Oh. Okay. No, because well, I mean, <laughs> well, you played. It's challenge. It's challenging because I played a link, a link to the past first, and then a link between worlds, and there was a familiarity about it. Um, I think you still need to play it because it's such an iconic classic game from Super yeah. Nintendo's era, and was the framework for uh, a link between worlds. So I'd recommend, and it's on the eShop for like I think eight bucks. <sighs> yeah, like you I should know. do it. Do it. See, and here's here's my thing too is that if Nintendo would just hurry up and get freaking Super Nintendo games on the 3DS, I would have played it already. Oh, bounce! That'd be awesome. You know what I mean? Like, I don't understand why we don't have Super Nintendo games on the 3DS yet because I would have. I would have played it all the way through by now if if it was on the 3DS. But it's but they haven't done that, and I don't really want to play. Uh, I don't really want to. I have a hard time sitting down playing anything on my Wii U, frankly. Um, a, like a lot of the time and so i would much rather play that on the handheld but i don't know that's just me uh having said that i've had i've had chrono trigger on my ps vita for a long time and haven't played that yet so uh, there goes my excuse i don't know but anyway what about you jesse what are you thinking you, you got one yet um yeah it's kind of a little bit of a cheat because i have played a little bit of it but it's it's so little it, you know i might as well have not played it um I could never get into uh, Mario Sunshine. Ah, okay. Yeah, I, I, I would get to the every time I tried playing it, I would get to the point where I got like the, the first nozzle switch out, and at that point, I kind of fizzled out on it. Hmm. Okay, cool. What about you, Justin? So, I've actually got kind of uh, two points to go at this from. Uh, and actually, Jesse just reminded me of Mar Mario Sunshine. I have never played any GameCube games ever. Whoa! You missed... Okay. Wow. I feel like I've at least played... I've never played a Virtual Boy game, but... That, that's, that's fair. That's, <laughs> that's I, fair. I think I'm not, I'm not the only I one think, here. I, I think the only way I could say I've played a GameCube game is I remember that there was a McDonald's in Lethbridge. Uh, I think it was on the west side that had like... GameCube oh, yeah, consoles. Dude. That was yeah. the, the only place I played it, but I have never played any GameCube games ever. And as a matter of fact, I've ne I think I've only ever once held a GameCube controller. Are you serious? Seriously, I have like three of them in my house. That is I've that got, is uh, shameful. Controllers or GameCubes? Controllers. Yeah, yeah, no, not three GameCubes. I yeah. actually regrettably got rid of my GameCube after we got a Wii because I, it was backwards compatible. I think I still have two GameCubes. Whether they work or not, I don't know. And I have at least two wired controllers and two WaveBirds that still work. I might have more. Than, hmm. I think I might have more, a few more wired controllers lying around in boxes. But so I think 
I think the funny part is like when you think of like the Wii and like backwards compatibility and all these functions. And I was listening to someone recently. They're like backwards compatibility, is a great idea until you realize that no one ever does it. Like, and the fact that even you know, no like you have like, yay, I can play all my old games. Where's the new games? Yeah. I want to play the new games. Exactly. Yeah, and like, oh yeah, you can play all these GameCube games. Only never really done that. matters in the first year when they yeah. don't have any content anyway. After that, yeah. it doesn't matter. So that's the system I've never played. The game I have never played that I need to play as part of my geekdom kind of Nintendo um, love. And there's actually two parts of this. I mentioned to you before that I came to Zelda at a very older age. I have never played any of The Legend of Zelda on the NES. Okay. So I, I don't I think played, I have ever played that I either. I feel like, like I've played... I played through like Remix... But I've never played the actual like Legend of Zelda, mm-hmm. the original. Yeah, the, um, the first game is actually pretty rough bec- due to it being the first one. They really didn't have a quote unquote Zelda formula yet, and but so that one's actually I wouldn't recommend that one as being so anyone's first Zelda. You know, play the others first and then go back to it. But uh, Zelda Two is it does have an interesting spin on it if you like RPG t- uh, aspects into your games. See, I, hmm. I'm one of the few people who enjoys Zelda 2. And see, maybe this is a maybe this is a bigger discussion in general, but I feel like um, I have a really hard time going back to play retro games. Like, oh, really? unless unless there's nostalgia there, um, I really have a hard time with with playing retro games in general. You know, like un- unless there's a certain thing that really sucks me in, um, I. I don't really have the patience for for some you know for old games like even you know you i just finished talking about balloon fight but i played it for like 15 minutes and then i was like all right that was fun and i'm done you know what i mean like it's not like i can sit down and go through the entire experience unless again unless there's some nostalgia that i can associate with it which is maybe why i haven't played through even though you know having been a member of the ambassador program uh, yes i have dabbled in most of the games that I got from the Ambassador program back in the day, um, through you know, you get like ten NES games and ten GBA games, but I didn't play very many of them for very long. I have Zelda one and Zelda two on my 3DS, and I haven't I haven't played those either, you know. And I wonder I wonder if it's just because I think twofold. I think a I have so many games on there like they dumped so many games on me at once that i wasn't able to like oh man i should uh, play this one and then this one all the way through and then this one all the way through i was just like oh i'm just gonna like have a have a nibble at each one of them and be done you know what i mean so i don't i kind of have that issue with with retro games in general uh i, I don't know if what do you do either of you feel like that i don't know is it just me um it depends you know, on the I game. Think, yeah I think like retro games or or those games that have some some nostalgia. Um, I think especially as a, as a parent, you know, sharing some of those moments with my kids, I, I enjoy. Like I remember the first time I sat down um, at my NES with my daughters and played Ma- Mario, right? And they're like, I don't get it. I like that you corrected yourself into Mario, by the way. I know, right? It, just... it really hurts. <laughs> it hurts so badly. You actually you intentionally went back to Mario. You almost said Mario, and you were like, "Screw you, naysayers! I'm saying it my way." <laughs> I'm saying it the way I've said it for thirty-four it. years no, of LA for. Don't go changing for those trolls. Yep, exactly. Um, but but there is that kind of nostalgia of showing it, um, and it and it does bring back good memories, right? Like the reason that we all kind of pine for GoldenEye to be accessible because we enjoyed it, right? We all have great memories of Smash, and and I mean, you know, even. You know the recent rollout of the update for Smash Brothers, where they where they added those stages from the original game, is a great testimony to that, right? Nostalgia is something that we live with, um, and is so critical. And, and sometimes going back to these old school games, a appreciates a couple things of, of brings you back to sweeter memories, and you enjoy it. And it also sometimes highlights like how rose colored glasses you were potentially wearing. Mm-hmm. Right? You're like you're like in hindsight, this game was shit. <laughs> like why? Like this was a horrible idea. Why did I like this? Right? Like I remember loving the original Ninja Turtles game. Yeah. Right. And and I and I've gone back and I've seen it played. I'm like, <laughs> I think I've actually beat as that. As I, I think I actually beat that game once. I remember going. I actually own. I went back and tracked down this cartridge. And actually, it's kind of a fun game. It's um, uh, but like the as far as like the nostalgia, one of the games that I loved on the original Game Boy 
was this terribly racist game uh, in just fully knowing this. It was called Mr. Chin's Gourmet Paradise. Oh, wow, and, this sounds bad. And it was, this awesome. little, it was this little Chinese guy. I'll see if I can find the music real quest, quick. But it's this little guy, and there's these little spiky... Um, let's see, Gourmet Paradise. Here we go. Uh, I'm going to see if I can get the music going here. I don't know if anybody even recognizes this music other than me. Um, but it was basically like this little Chinese guy running around, um, and he lays these traps and turns these spiky, spiky enemies into uh, peaches, and then you eat the peaches. And he's like this fat Chinese guy, and then he, and then he, um, he, you know, that's just like a, a sort of like arcade-based Mario Brothers almost sort of level design. Um, and I just love the music and everything. And I actually tracked down a cartridge and I played it recently. And I was like, oh, man, uh, nostalgia is huge for me. And I don't think if I had ever played this game before that I would enjoy it. But because I spent so much time as a kid, I can go back in an instant. And I think that's part of the reason why, like, um, I don't feel too bad that I haven't played Link's, uh, A Link to the Past. Because, I don't know, I, I'm not, I haven't fallen in love with it yet. And I feel like there are other things I could fall in love with now. And I just don't know. Maybe, but you're saying, Justin, I need to go back to it is what you're saying. Yeah, I, I, I think so. Um, and I think, you know, I even go back to um, some of the quotes that I was reading from Awada last week is, is uh, him even mentioning that these old school games are bringing new players to IPs that they didn't know existed. Like the origin stories of these games, essentially, and older players like us are, are coming back and renewing because of the nostalgia and the love that we had for it, right? Like, I, I, I love the fact that I have my old school NES here and I have a box full of 8-bit games still. And I feel right? the, I and, feel and the I exact same I have to blow way. in the cartridge every once in a while and, and get it in the right angle perfectly to work. Um, in a lot of ways, when, I, when I'm playing it on my TV down here, I'm irritated that I'm, I'm, I'm looking at this like flat screen Philips nice television that's HDing this this game that should be stuck behind an old TV tube, you know, massive, massive uh, TV that has an 8-bit feeling, right? And the thing hums and mm -hmm. you're, you start going cross-eyed from playing it too long. So I feel I feel the exact same way about my old Game Boy. I went or I got a I got an old. Um, Game Boy brick from my dad for Christmas a couple of years ago, and I actually like it had some of the lines in it that were that had um, that had kind of died, you know, like the 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 actual circuitry underneath the screen um, on those old Game Boys, uh, the glue on them separated from the from the circuitry or something like that, and so oh, you'd wow. get these weird vertical lines uh, where the screen wouldn't actually show what it was supposed to show it would just be blank there. And so I actually like looked up online, how do you fix this? I like got a soldering iron and remelted the glue and fixed the screen. And like, I've got this old game boy that I've, that I've kind of restored a little bit so that I can play these old games. And it's just like, it's so cool. And I know this is kind of, we've kind of gotten off topic from old games that we, we should have played, but just that whole idea of nostalgia in general, playing it as it was originally intended yeah exactly you that that says it right there <laughs> so I, when you something was said earlier in the conversation which made me think of another answer so i'd like to go back to that tomorrow. okay so do you so you're familiar with the Shin Megami tensei series do you know which is the first game of that series you know or spin-off of that series to be released outside of japan Shin Megami Tensei? No. <laughs> uh, not, I have no idea. Not outside of Japan. It was a virtual boy game. It's known, okay. as, known as Jack Brothers. Wow. With that, Mario that... de Hijo. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm sure I butchered that. Is the nice. Uh, basically, the main characters are Jack Frost and Pyro Jack. If you know the if you know those monsters from the ser the series, slightly like very smallly, I'm sure, smallly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm sure the uh, Sharp Fe game or uh, the uh, SMT Crossfire Emblem will uh, will have definitely, you know, the, the uh, Jack Frost is definitely all over the place in there. You know, I was, mm -hmm. one, I was in the uh, in that the uh, the shop that they showed on the Treehouse video. You know the Pyro Jack. Was, oh yes, 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 yes. Yeah, that's right. Jack Frost was like the lo was like the logo of this shop. 
Right. Okay, cool. So that 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 if I ever got my hands on a Virtual Boy, Jack Brothers would be one of the. Sometimes those old RPGs, though, man, like sometimes those are the worst to go back to because they're so like that that genre has made leaps and bounds as far as playability in, in some I things. I, I so t- tried going, and back. especially an SMT game, I feel like <laughs> whew, that could be bad to go back yeah. to that. Yeah, even going back to the Final Fantasy One or Dragon Quest One, those are rough games. Mm-hmm. Or like the old, the old Game Boy, like Final Fantasy Legend. Oh, those games were rough too. Um, right on. Cool. Well, I if you guys have any questions of the week, so you know, let us know what Nintendo game have you never played but really should have. Let you know, email us and let us know next week, and we can read off some of the answers as well. So, uh, awesome. I like that idea. And if you have any other ideas for cool segments too, um, you know, give us your suggestions, and uh, we will. Take them into consideration. Um, hey, did you guys hear that over there? It's the postman. <sighs> yeah, that was pretty, uh, pretty amazing. Uh, yeah, pretty amazing introduction of that by myself if i say so myself it was good it was, it was yeah, very nice pretty, pretty amazing. i was yeah. i was yeah. captivated i didn't know what was occurring <laughs> i know um, you didn't see it coming at all right i was like oh wow it's done it's the, wow. it's the postman i had no idea he was on his way <laughs> uh <laughs> why don't you uh uh justin do we have what do we have this week uh so it was a quiet week for us as well in regards to um, emails. So I reached out to uh, Twitter and I said, hey guys, I t- actually Twitter and Facebook and said, what questions do you guys want us to discuss? And Brandon CHFG on Twitter said, um, aside from the console, or sorry, handheld console hybrid, what other crazy ideas might the NX be? Hmm. What might it be? Other than the handheld console hybrid. I think the uh, one of the uh, obvious answers would be uh, like whatever the base needed for the quality of life other items to be paired with. Are oh. you thinking like some sort of like just home hub in general? So it's not just a console, but it's like a hub? Right. Like a home hub sort yeah, of deal? Yeah, I'm, I'm imagining this... this quality of life items you know they 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 collect data while you sleep or whatever they do but they need some place to send the data and while right. they could have wi-fi chips and send it to somewhere in the cloud you know another solution would be to have another device in the house to collect this data and, and next mm-hmm. would be a perfect repository for that so would, do you foresee this being connected to the tv still yeah, I think it would be. Yeah, so it, almost like a, a sort it, of PC. Okay. It may not have anything to do directly with the data that you 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 may not be able to do anything with that data, but at least other have software, like a cool like other software could access the data and do something with it and to, to present to you, you know, do this. It might might help you sleep better. Like a Wii Fit NX sort of thing that is expanded beyond just the Wii Fit, yeah. you know, training and and weigh, you know, your weight and stuff like that. Like it would be incorporated into that. I can see that. Yeah, and help with actually dietary stuff and, you know, improve your sleep. And, mm-hmm. and we already know, like they've said, too, that it is going to have, you know, mobile, mobile connectivity is going to be um, a big part of it as well. Right. And so and so having a sort of. Um, I, I think it'd be really cool. I love the, the what they have almost kind of like they didn't stumble upon it obviously, but this sort of idea that they started with Street Pass, and you know, kind of building on your idea too, Jesse. Where um, I've always thought that it would be really cool if, in fact, it's always bothered me that I have not been able to, you know, th- there's this Wii Fit meter, the pedometer that you can get for Wii Fit. Um, why why couldn't they have something similar to that that is also you know. Um, maybe got a little bit of just the tiniest bit of street pass functionality that can also be streamed back and forth from your home console to uh, something else so that you could then come home and say, okay, well, I've now I'm going to load all my street pass data onto my NX and have everything else. See, um, that's what I initially thought they were going to do with the 3DS. You know, have Wii U 3DS connectivity 
to have Street Pass functionality with Wii U content, but going through the 3DS Street Pass system. Mm hmm. So. Or, I mean, and like, and the thing is, too, is that they've got Wii Fit U, which, I mean, according to Nintendo, you'd never know it. Like, how, when was the last <laughs> time you ever even saw this game on the shelves? Um, but, like, it, it literally, they, they've let this thing die. I don't even know why they bothered even making it if they're not gonna uh, it's not selling either and i think they need i think that's a big part of it too but um why why is it not why can you not take the steps from your 3ds and use that as your pedometer for we fit you for example mm -hmm. right but like a lot of things like that where it's like ah oh, it's just these things don't connect very well and i want them to connect really well and it's like it's silly that they don't and i i feel like that is regardless of if it's a hybrid or not i feel like Nintendo needs to have all of their different pieces communicate with each other better, uh, and they don't right now. And so I think that's what I would do. I don't know. What about you, Justin? Yeah, um, kind of. Well, actually, while we're sitting on the on the Wii uh, the Wii Fit U thing, completely side note of this. Um, about five years ago, I lost about seventy five pounds primarily because of the Wii Fit. Uh, oh system. wow. Yeah, it was my primary like weighing scale device. Um, like every Tuesday morning, I got up and I went down and I weighed myself on it. And that was like my primary device, and it was kind of like the motivation of checking in and um, and kind of keeping to that regiment of checking in every week and kind of the the familiarity of it. And like not all my exercises was on the Wii the Wii U device. I I just had a new kid and that kept me going a lot, obviously. And they just started mm -hmm. learning how to run, so that lot helped lose a lot of it, but. That was my pr primary actual device of like checking in on my weight and weight and, weighing, and weighing stuff and kind of watching my me go from obese to like thin. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, completely completely side note, but interesting. Um, for me, I think that the NX. Uh, so play along with me here, folks. I think it's going to be a dongle, <clears throat> and, and I wish I could say I'm kidding. Like we're we're a little bit of crazy here, but I think it's a dongle that you put in the back of your TV, much like a Chromecast. Chromecast. Oh. Um, and you have um, devices that will allow you to work through it, and you can use your smartphone using an app, and you choose what games you want to do, and it's very much like a Steam cloud-based account system. Um, oh wow! So you're thinking like PlayStation Now sort of deal? Almost PlayStation Now. Wow. And and what you do is those those games. Some of them have some of them have what they would have like mobile connectivity allowed with them, so you can either watch a game played mobily. So I can I can view it almost like a Twitch uh, mobily, or I can actually play it. So it might be a, you know, in Mario, um, there is a Mario app that is associated with my Mario NX game that I'm playing, and. Uh, when I log in, I see that as an option, and when I'm traveling, I can just like grab that. I can grab that and play it on my phone. Mm -hmm. So a lot of it's cloud based. A lot of it's cloud based. A lot of it's computing um, enabled that way. I really and like that. And you know what? I, you know what I think is the smartest thing about that idea is the incredibly low entry cost. Yep. For anybody to get, I think that would be. And I the, think that would be amazing. The interesting part of it is you still have a bit of a pad um, controller, i.e. your smartphone, and you just kind of connect into like a, you kind of insert your smartphone into a control, mm -hmm. which adjusts. Can you, can you foresee like, a, and I know that he kind of is saying other than the handheld console hybrid, yep. but I think this kind of factors into this too, where yep. the 3DS's successor also is, you know, for those who are interested in it still, um, you can then also get games for the 3DS successor that you could also stream via this via HDMI and wireless to your TV. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. the beautiful part of it is that you have the backlog of every single game that Nintendo's ever done. Mm -hmm. So it would have some sort of storage on it too. I'm guessing. Yep. Yeah, I mean it's all it's well it's all um, cloud storage. What I'm saying is that like you know if I want to play. It's a library. I choose like NES, and I go through. I have the entire NES library there. I want to try something GameCube. GameCube's there, mm -hmm. and it's like a service where it's like ten dollars a, a month. Yeah, so that makes sense. So the playing is actually streaming, like Play On and and PlayStation Now. Almost, yeah. Hmm. I mean, I mean, we're going. I mean, we're going kind of pie in the sky, crazy. But I mean, that's. I think that that yeah. 
I, I like that idea, but I think that that's a little bit too ambitious for where Nintendo's at with their online functionality right oh, now. Oh, absolutely, it is. Um, well, but... well, it is right now, but I mean, you got to think. You got to think that you know. And, and this is the this is the this is the rub. Once we see what um, um, their partnership with DNA really actually comes comes to fruition with, and like what they're actually producing, this this may not. And I mean, you know, if we see, for example, if we see that Pokemon Shuffle comes out in. November and I can somehow log in using my Nintendo network ID and have access to level 186 and nothing's different Mm -hmm. Then we know that they are maybe then it could be possibility because it seems like they have that infrastructure. Hmm. I like it. I I think it's, I I think that would be great. I love the idea of just the the Chromecast idea again, because the low barrier to entry, right? Everybody's already got a smartphone. So that's, that's you know just using that as your sort of entry level, and then if you want to get really serious about it, then you can get whatever the new handheld is. I like that, yeah. and it ties into their mobile strategy. Yeah, absolutely. I like it. Uh, next is uh, our next one coming from at Call Me Chris on Twitter. Uh, you should discuss the five most replayable 3DS games. Uh, wow. Okay. Um, <laughs> off the top of my head. Off the top of my head, I'm gonna say now. Now, when we say replayable, are we saying like actually going through and playing through the whole game, or just that you can revisit again and again? Um, like sustainable wise, I think I'm. I'm gonna say more of just like that you can continue to get good value out of it. Sure. Um, so Mario Kart Seven, I think, is a big one. Uh, I, ever since Mario Kart 8 came out, I feel like that game has kind of lost some, you know, some of the, uh, some of the luster. luster. But I still, that game still is really fun, especially if you're somebody who plays with the 3D on. Um, it just is a beautiful game. So uh, definitely that one. Um, I would say Smash Brothers again. I know there's a Wii U version, but I am actually kind of partial to the 3DS version. I prefer the 3DS version to the Wii U version. Um, but I'm weird like that. Uh, I don't know. What about you guys? If you can think of some others, I don't know if we need to each come up with five, but just like together, if you, if there's any others that you can think of, uh, this sounds bad. Um, I mean, everyone Pokemon had my shuffle. Three. Yeah. Yeah. Pokemon <laughs> shuffle. You want to know, you want to know what I'm right now? Pokemon shuffle. Yeah. Still, um, still. And I mean, you know, and that's, that's both a good thing and a bad thing. Um, uh, what else can I think of? What about you, Jesse? Oh, oh, sorry. Mario, uh, Mario versus Donkey Kong, Tipping Stars. Oh, yeah, I kind of, I come back to that quite frequently. I'll enjoy that. What about you, Jesse? See, a lot of these games that you're saying, mentioning, are games I didn't particularly enjoy. Uh, so <laughs> I'm not going to be going back to them. Um, but yeah, the, you know, the, you're a monster. I know some of these, a lot of these 3DS games, I wouldn't say are very good from the replayable factor. Um, I know, you know, Link Between Worlds is a short game, but because it's really, really short for a Zelda game, going back to you know playing it for the next, you know, year or two years after playing it once, isn't mm-hmm. so bad. You know, I wouldn't you know, def- wouldn't want to play Skyward Sword annually. In fact, I haven't played it since it launched, and I want to go. I want to go back and play that again sometime. Yeah, but uh, yeah, to- and again, looking at looking at some of these online here, just at a list of 3DS games, is if you're looking for replayability, as in like you're playing the same thing over and over again, um, I or, or either just like sort of bang for your buck if you're looking at like hours played versus dollars paid for the game. Um, I would say Animal Crossing: New Leaf is a pretty good one if. Uh, you can put a ton of hours into that game. I know I did. Uh, Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate. Um, what else do we got here? Uh, Tomodachi Life is an interesting one that uh, is from the same people as Animal Crossing, uh, except you use your Miis. That one's a little bit weird and quirky, and uh, you could get some good time out of that. Um, what else? As far as replayability as well, Theater Rhythm final fantasy curtain call uh you can play the same song over and over again i think i don't know jesse you've played those games haven't you i haven't actually played them but i that seems like a kind of game that you could really get go back to again and again and again there are certain songs that are just fun 
yeah, sometimes mm-hmm. you just you get sick of quick, but it depends. Again, that's more like nostalgia. Some people will like the Final Fantasy VII songs. I'll prefer the four and six songs. Yeah, totally. Final but, Fantasy VI, man. There, there are, you know, that that is one I do go back to every once in a while. In fact, my son was playing that a few weeks ago, and, mm-hmm. and he's like, "I can't get past this one song." I'm like, "Here, let me try it." You know, completely dry. Haven't touched it in, since the game launched, and I was able to be- beat a score still. <laughs> nice. You know, I, th- I think what the 3DS has that, and I think it's the byproduct of being portable, um, they just have a lot of really great games that are designed to be picked up and have short doses of and then come back to, which therefore makes it more replayable because you continue to come to it, right? Um, great example, as I was mentioning a couple of weeks ago, Gunman Clive, right? I have finished Gunman Clive. I think it's fantastic. For $3, that was a fantastic game. Right, and it was small chunks I could take wherever I wanted, play whenever I wanted. Am I going to come back to it? No, but it's a game that has some replayability. So I think it goes back to to Zach's point: is it's dollars versus enjoyment and and what you're getting out of it. And I think that there's that the 3ds, the 3ds's library, because of it being a portable device, just offers so much more. So um, yeah, I don't know. Check. There's so much out there, so I don't know, guys. And anyone else out there who who can think of games to name, please let us know as well. Now, yep. If we're, I'm gonna open up the can a little bit of a can of worms here. Oh dear. You can still play DS games on 3DS. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay. So I'm gonna throw out Picross 3D. It's probably the best. Oh gosh. Best yes. DS game ever. Oh yeah. You know, I, I know. I've wiped my data file and replayed it at least four times. Yeah, I would. Uh, I would also add Rhythm Heaven, which I know we're getting a cool new rhythm. Ge- Hopefully, we're getting a new Rhythm Heaven game in North America as well. But uh, yeah, Rhythm Heaven that. for the original yeah. DS, uh, yeah. also amazing. Yeah, the new one hasn't been announced yet. And considering it, it's got comp- components of the GBA version that was never released here. That's kind of up all the up. more reason that we want it. That's yeah, <laughs> which is all the more reason why they may not give it to us. Ah, uh, no, I want it so bad. Seriously, that is like my number one anticipated 3DS game right now is the new Rhythm Heaven. Uh, it's so good. If you haven't played Rhythm Heaven, what are you doing with your life? Uh, so fun. Um, I'm just living it. Yeah, seriously. And then also so going good. back to DS, and I, I mentioned it in previous podcasts, but it, the first time I played through Dragon Quest Nine. Yeah, that was just going through the main story took me 75 hours and at the time when they had did you know quote unquote dlc which was you know stuff already on cart just unlocked through the internet stuff which, you know like what they're doing with splatoon right mm. but none of that's the that those servers have been shut off now for over a year now so but with that extra content i put in over 250 hours into that game that's Probably wow the one game I put the most time in on on DS craziness cool um anything else any other suggestions okay finally the last um last one here from Peter Ono on Facebook what what the new Nintendo president needs to do to turn around the Wii U as well as what to do next gen with the NX to get back on top. Uh, the second part, we I think we kind of already talked about, right? With the with the um, yeah, we, we kind of talked about that already. However, let, let's talk about turning the Wii U around. I feel like this may be really pessimistic, but I think I they just I, you just keep coasting to the finish line. I don't, yeah, I don't really I, know. I don't think there's anything they can do. They've they've thrown all their all their barrels at this one already. Yeah, I I feel like this is about as much. This is about what we're gonna get. So uh, I don't know. What do you, Justin? Do you disagree? Like other than maybe, like, like no, more, I mean, like, I mean, more virtual would... console games. Uh, I don't know. The the only thing they can really do, I think, at this point in this, um, you need to a come to grips that the Wii U. Uh, is near its end. You know, mm-hmm. it's been a good, it's been a good pet, but unfortunately, is being put down at some point soon. Um, wow. Uh, okay. <laughs> it's getting dark. It's getting real dark. Sorry, kids. Um, <laughs> yeah, and as, as we've said I, before, it's it's whether it's 2016 or 2017 that puts it at a four or five year life cycle. Yeah. 
I, I think, I th- and I and I really do think that that given what the what we saw at E three, had they shown us a Metroid and had they shown us Zelda, that I think I would have said like, okay, yeah, we can they can still kind of kind of you know ride this ride this horse to, to the um, to the end, you know, with their health high. I do think that we're just not seeing that with the Wii U. But what they need to be able to do now is they need to position or allow the Wii U to be a gateway effectively for the NX. And what I mean by that is 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 is, is showing off off some functionality that you're going to see perhaps on the NX um, on the Wii U, but show why it's better on the mm-hmm. NX. Um, and I think, and, I... And, and, you know, we talk about that infrastructure of like, hey, just opening up all those libraries, right? Like open up all your catalog, open up your NES catalog, open up your, your GameCube, your your Wii and your, your N64 catalog and continue to, to build that currently on the system. Um, and just knowing that when it comes to the NX, that those things are already in existence because you've created that infrastructure to allow it to be there, um, and continue to work on the online functionality um, that gives us faith that the NX will have it. And I mean, like the voice chat, right? Like, like Splatoon, for example. You, you know, it's not needed, but do it. Just add it. Just do it. Show show the buyer, show the consumer, show us as fans that that's where Nintendo is going to go, and they're going to try and make a a strong move and they're listening to their fans and I think that's what they need to do. The next president needs to listen to the fans and we're not saying a Wada didn't, but I think be be listening more and reaction more. And, mm-hmm. and even, even the voice chat, that can be defaulted to off, that can be parental controlled to off and you know people, people uh, force people to opt in, but at least give people the option. Yeah. I think the other thing that they need to do again, kind of talking about um, talking about like what they need to do for both the NX and the the Wii U is they need to have they need to really like start pushing these out the door and like doing fire sales. You know what I mean? Where like we're talking price drop. You know, make a, a bundle for two hundred and fifty bucks that's that has Splatoon and Mario Kart and Smash Brothers all bundled into the box and sell um sell as many as you possibly can. And I feel like. At this point, they kind of just need to go for broke on that, and to even if it's going to cost them a little bit of money in the short term, getting more people back on Nintendo consoles before the NX comes out, I think is a really good idea. Um, and I don't know if that means like a little bit of a hardware refresh to to get to you know to cross the finish line strong, but but they they tend to just kind of you know let they let the Wii U die is what they did, and they fizzled out so terribly. You mean the Wii. Or, sorry, the Wii. They let the Wii, you know, just fizzle out uh, to the point where when the Wii U came out and it had the same name, everybody was like, what? I don't even play my Wii anymore. And, and nobody cared. And so I think they really need to be excited about getting as many people playing as they can. And yeah, that's what I think. So, and, and again, it, even just considering it as like, listen, we're just, we're just building good, good building, building the Nintendo name again. Right with the Wii U uh, being as good as it you know as it possibly can be, and bring back that player's choice or whatever players selects for twenty bucks, you get those those games that usually happens at the end of the life cycle. We haven't seen any of those yet, but yeah. those are awesome too. And I well, would and I have seen images of at least I think the European release they were having a bundle with Super Mario Maker that comes with the eight bit voxel me. Uh, Amiibo. Um, so I'm presuming we're going to get those here as well. But what they I think they they going to do, going to have to start doing soon is price drops before the holiday season. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and I guess and I guess here's here's the thing. I would say this is um, good question, Peter. I actually don't want Nintendo to be on top. And I've said this before. I don't think Nintendo on top is what we as gamers want. I want a scrappy fight uh, a Nintendo that has a bit of fight in it. And not um, the not the lazy on top Nintendo. Correct. Not the complacent Nintendo who's who can, you know, print money so to say, but I want one that has a bit of fight who decides to push and who takes risk because as much as we say it, I don't I really don't believe there are any other game companies in the industry that takes the type of risks that Nintendo does. And it's not about it's 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 about pushing 
what does it mean to, to, to play games and have fun playing games? And that's what Nintendo does well. And I'd rather them be in a position where they're losing a bit and are kind of, you know, a bit bloodied than kind of, you know, sitting like fat cats and just stroking their ego. Because I don't think us, us as gamers um, benefit from, from that. But I want them to be in a healthy position where they're still relevant and not needing to make compromises for what they believe they have to do to stay alive. Agreed. And what their, st- their shareholders and stakeholders are forcing them to do. Um, I, I don't know. I'm rant off. Cool. No, I agree. Right on. Um, yeah. So thank you everybody for sending in your questions. You can of course send us emails, Nintendo dads at gmail.com. And, uh, I'm going to get our, uh, our outro music going here. Here we go. Perfect. Uh, so of course, again, thank you to everybody who has, who contributed questions for this week's show. Um, you can, of course, join in NintendoDads at gmail.com. You can find us as well on all the social medias, uh, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, 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 at NintendoDads. Um, email us as well, NintendoDads at gmail.com. You can listen to us every Wednesday night uh, at twitch.tv slash NintendoDads. You can, of course, look us up on YouTube. Just search for NintendoDads there. And, of course, there's always that voicemail line, people. That's 929-25-N-DADS. That's 929-256-3237. Uh, big thanks to OC Remix for our show, uh, or for our music throughout the show. Wow, uh, it's getting late here, folks. Thanks uh, <laughs> <laughs> for the whole show. And, of course, uh, thanks to Carter Johnson for our amazing artwork. You can check out her work at megacarter.tumblr.com. Uh, as well, you can head over to iTunes, Stitcher, or VGTribune.com to download us there. Uh, and, of course, if you're going to change the world, absolutely uh, leave us a five-star rating or any rating, but really five stars. If you're not going to go all out, then then why do it at all, people? Uh, and, of course, leave us a review. That's going to get as many, um, as many people uh, hearing about the show as possible, and we really appreciate it. all of you who have done that so far. Uh, until next week, any, any final words before we head out next week, everybody? Go play some more Pokemon Shuffle. Go play some Poke. Do the Pokemon Shuffle. Uh, Everybody is shuffling, shuffling. Uh, Right on. We will see you all next week. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to Nintendo Dad.